11,000 prisoners today, as I say, eight or 900 of whom are sentenced prisoners. If, to, to get to, to my formulation, if through bail reform, uh, through swifter processing uh, of prisoners, the city, if the city were uh, adjudicating criminal cases, that is from the point of arrest to the point of final disposition, whether it be dismissal, conviction, whatever, uh, today, as fast as they were 20 years ago, there would be several thousand fewer people confined on, uh, in the city's jail. So if we did that, uh, and if the state legislature acted on the several proposals it has in front of it to change the age of criminal responsibility and we moved the juveniles, Right? Three years ago, the sentencing commission that Judge Littman established, of which I serve as executive director, made, I thought, a good proposal to do just that. And it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened because nobody wants to pay the bill. The minute you begin to define the 16 and 17 year olds who are now on Rikers Island and elsewhere in the state as juveniles, the cost of their custody shifts from the state to the county. And, or, or, or from the jail to the, to the, to the county and, and probably doubles. And that's why the New York State Association of Counties and indeed the city of New York has opposed that change because they won't vote for it until the governor and the state legislature agree to indemnify them for the cost. But assuming that you could get rid of several hundred of the 16 and 17 year olds, uh, assuming that you could speed up the processing time and reduce the population by a further 1,000 or 1,500, and assuming that we did a good job uh, with diverting the mentally ill, which I think we could do a far better job of, uh, I think it's within the realm of possibility that the city's jail population that it really is responsible for, and, and there's always going to be a jail population, let's not kid ourselves, there's never gonna be a time when the city doesn't have to have a jail and a system of jails, could get down to the neighborhood of 6,000. If you had 6,000 prisoners, you could, within the existing zoning allowance, build, you could rebuild the Brooklyn House of Detention and house 1,600 people there. I tried to do that uh, in 2004. 2006. You could, on the site of the Vernon C. Bain Center, the barge in the Bronx adjacent to the Bronx Terminal Market, you could, on that site, build, replace the barge, which currently holds about 800 people, and build at least 1,600 beds there. So you'd have a 1,600 bed facility in the heart of Brooklyn, physically near the courts, connected physically to the Brooklyn Criminal Court building and a building in the South Bronx just a few moments away from the Bronx Criminal Courts on 161st Street, 1,600, that's 3,200 beds. There are about eight or 900 beds in Manhattan at the tombs. Let's accept for a moment that that probably can't be changed. So right there, you've got 4,000 beds. In Queens, the old Queens House of Detention was built for about 400, but people I've spoken to say that if you raised that building down to its foundations, you could probably build a, a, a state-of-the-art building for 1,000 there. That's 5,000 beds in well-designed, modern buildings designed not to be uh, 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 cannibalized for weapons, designed uh, humanistically with good air circulation, with air conditioning, with access to light, with living units that respect human dignity, with classrooms, with space to do all the things we would wish to have our jails do. That's 5,000 beds. I'll accept that close to 1,000 of the sentenced prisoners may have to remain on Rikers Island, but you would have then Four facilities, each no larger than 1,600 people, far more manageable, located in the boroughs, um, near the courts, and the sentenced prisoners would remain on Rikers Island. I think that's doable.